Okay, so now that we've together talked about how to assign RNS, hopefully you guys have gone through that worksheet, you had hopefully not that much trouble, or if you did, you looked at the answers, you corrected the mistakes you made, and hopefully you guys are RNS gurus. Okay, so the next step kind of in uh, stereochemistry is to talk about how to identify relationships between molecules. And honestly, this isn't hard. It's basically just assigning RNS to a pair of molecules, uh, RNS in this one, RNS in this one, comparing the different stereocenter configurations, and then applying a name to it. So really, we're not doing anything new. We're just learning a couple of definitions for certain scenarios of how you compare molecules together. And that's all this is. So this is going to be a relatively quick video. Okay, so just a quick recap. Remember, structural isomers are the types of isomers that differ in their atom to atom connections. So think butane and isobutane. Between the two, the molecular formula stays the same, C4H10. Geometric isomers, remember, think but, uh, two butene like this, the cis double bond, two butene with the trans double bond. Same molecular formula, C4H8. All right, now let's get over to stereoisomers. So now I can actually kind of elaborate on what they are. So stereoisomers are the same molecule uh, structurally, but they differ in the configurations of the, diff of the various stereocenters in the molecule. So there are really two types of stereoisomers. There are enantiomers, enantiomers, and here's a kind of a word that gives me a lot of verbal trouble, diastereomers. Okay, so let me define these for you guys. So enantiomers, this is the one I feel like it's the easiest. If you have a molecule, let's just say there's two stereocenters, R comma R, there's two stereocenters, they're both R. The enantiomer is the exact opposite. You take the exact opposite stereochemistry at each stereocenter and you just kind of flip it. So the enantiomer for a molecule that has two stereocenters with R and R would be S and S. If we had something S and R, then the enantiomer to that would be R comma S. And one more example, just to belabor the point, if we had R, S, R, the enantiomer would be S, R, S. So, not hard at all. Now, on the other hand, diastereomers are basically just any other combination. So to use this example, let's say we had a structure R comma R, a diastereomer would just be S comma R, right? It's just anything that's not an antimer, essentially. So again, if we had R, S, R, a diastereomer could just be R, R, R. So just remember that this enantiomer is like the left and right hand pair. The enantiomer in my left hand is my right hand. But on the other hand, a diastereomer would just be anything else. Okay, so let's do a few examples to kind of, you know, apply these labels to pairs of structures, and then we'll call it a day for this video. Alrighty, so we're going to do three quick examples, and then we'll just wrap this video up. So usually when someone gives you a pair of molecules, you have a, a few options. They'll say, identify the relationship between the two molecules to see, like, what kind of isomers they are or if they're not. And they'll give you these types of options. You'll either have diastereomers, I'm gonna abbreviate that. You have enantiomers, enantiomers. You could have uh, structural isomers, geometric isomers, or if they're being sneaky, you could actually have the same molecule. No matter what though, the process always goes that you assign RNS. I mean, here's kind of my checklist. Structural isomers. Is there a different type of atom to atom connection between the molecules? If there isn't, is there some type of double bond where there would be a geometric isomer? If that's, you know, if neither of these check out, then which that's quick to look at. Then you have to assign RNS and basically see are the stereocenter configurations the same? If it is, that would be the same molecule. Uh, you know, are they opposite between each other? That would be enantiomers. And if are they just plain different from each other and not opposite, 
then you'd have a case of diastereomers. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not going to, at least in the video, I'm not going to give you any of these right here. So we're just focused on these three. Okay, so let's just go ahead and assign R and S. Let's start off with the left structure. Okay, so luckily we have two stereo centers right here. And what's good for us is that the hydrogens are dashed. They are the lowest priority group at both stereo center. Okay, so let's apply R and S to this left carbon, this left stereo center. Okay, so uh, on the periodic table, we can see that it goes carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So directly off of this carbon, fluorine is the heaviest atom, the highest priority group. Then we need to make a tie, we need to break a tie. This ET, that stands for ethyl group, right? So this is a carbon and he's attached to another carbon, right? So it goes carbon, then he's attached to a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. That's what this carbon is attached to. Now we kind of need to look at this carbon right here. And you can see that he's attached to an oxygen, a hydrogen, and a carbon. So this carbon is clearly higher priority than the ethyl group. So we can go ahead and erase that and give this group over here a two and the ethyl group a three. And like we said, since this hydrogen is dashed, we can go ahead and just straight up assign. So it looks like to follow the priorities, we would go this way. We would go counterclockwise, which we know to be S. Awesome. Now let's do it for the next stereo center, hopefully a little bit quicker. So oxygen right here is the highest priority group. He gets a one. This is just a methyl group. We just kind of had the same type of logic over here with the ethyl group. This group over here is number two. The methyl group is number three. Lowest priority group is facing away from us, so we can go ahead and straight up assign. Looks like we're going our, uh, clockwise like this, kind of turning the car this way. That would be R. Okay, so now we have S over here and R over here. Let's assign R and S on this structure, compare the two, and see which label is appropriate. Okay, so let's go with this stereo center first. Fluorine is number one. This carbon over here is number two. Ethyl group would be three. We still have the hydrogen is dashed, so we can go ahead and straight up a sign. We're going this way. Looks like this carbon is an R. Use a different color. Now let's go ahead and look at the other stereo center. Okay, so now we see that the hydrogen is facing at us, it's pointing directly at us. So we can go ahead and assign, and then let's just take the opposite stereo chemistry. All right, so the OH would be number one. We already said the group to the left would be number two. The methyl group would be three. So this looks like S, but it's actually R, right? Okay, so now let's compare. You see how we have SR and we have RR? So they're not opposite of each other. They're not the same. So these two groups relative to each other would be a pair of diastereomers. So you see how that works? It's really not that hard. You already know how to do the R and S uh, signing. All you have to do is basically do it to two different structures, compare them, figure out which definition is applicable, and give it a name. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so we're actually going to do one more problem, and then I want to talk about a quick thing at the end. All right, so again, here's another pair. Someone would ask you, okay, what type, what's the relationship between these two molecules, molecules, you know? So let's go ahead and just look for our stereo centers and start assigning stereochemistry. So it looks like we got a stereo center here, we have a stereo center there, and over here, obviously, the same ones. Okay, so let's start on the left. So you can see that we have, we don't have the hydrogen drawn in, but he would be our lowest priority group. So I'm gonna go ahead and show him as a wedge. All right, so he's facing at us. So we'll assign stereochemistry, we'll see what, if it looks like R or S, and then we'll take the opposite. So the iodine is clearly priority number one. I think it's easy to see that uh, compared to this methyl group and the rest of the chain, the rest of the chain would be number two. Methyl group would be three. It looks like R, but the hydrogen's facing towards us, that's the lowest priority group. And we're actually going to take the opposite, so this would be S. All right, not bad. So let's do it for this stereo center. So the OH is number one. This is an ethyl group, but the rest of the chain is bigger and it will win the tiebreaker. 
So I'll put a 2 over here. The ethyl group would be 3. However, though, we have this hydrogen going on, and he is in the plane of the board. He's not facing towards us or away from us, so it looks like we need to do a double switch. So I'm just going to kind of extract this part out. So if I'm going to take the dot out, I'm going to do a double switch. So I'm going to switch the OH and the H first. Let's put the H as a di uh, wedge. Didn't touch the ethyl group. And the OH is down here. I'm then going to switch. Let's switch the hydrogen and the ethyl group. So then I'm going to move him down over here. Right, so then the ethyl group becomes a wedge. The hydrogen becomes a dash, which is good, away from us. And we didn't touch the OH. Okay, so hopefully you're staying with me. Sorry, this is a little weird, but the OH was number one. The group to the side was number two. The ethyl group was number three. Now we now have the hydrogen going away from us, so we can just straight up assign stereochemistry. This looks like R, and sure enough, it is. So let's go ahead and erase that squiggly line. So this is an R at this stereo center, so we have SR. Okay, so let's do it over here. And it looks a little bit of an easier of a situation because we have our lowest priority group facing away from us at this stereo center and that one. All right, so let's just go right along with it. Iodine gets number one. The rest of the chain over here gets number two. The methyl group over here gets a three. Looks like R. Lowest priority group is away from us. It is R. Now let's try over here. OH group gets a number one. The group over here gets a two. The group up here gets a three. It looks like R, and sure enough, it is R. So again, they're not the same. They're different stere uh, stereochemical outputs, and they're not uh, opposite. So we don't have enantiomers. It's not the same. Again, this is a pair of diastereomers. Okay, I'm just going to erase this. I want to talk about one more quick thing, and then we'll be done. So I meant to mention this in the last video, but I want to talk about something called a meso structure, or if a structure is meso. So if you take a look at these two example structures I've drawn up here, I think it's easy to see that in both of them there's a plane of symmetry, right? So let me grab a nice pretty color. So in this cyclohexane structure, you can see if I slice it across the middle, right? I could fold itself on top of it, right? So when you have this type of plane of symmetry, like you also see in this structure here, if I draw straight down the middle, believe it or not, there is no chirality. Because if you took the mirror image of this, let's just say this structure right here, it's an anti where it would look like this. If I had a dash here and a dash here. However, what I could do is I could totally just flip him over and he would look exactly like this structure. Same thing here. If I took this structure's mirror image, he would look like a ring with two dashes. But again, if I flipped him over, he would be identical to this structure with the two wedges. So if you can ever see a plane of symmetry, and usually this takes the form of a question asking you, is a structure chiral? If you can see the plane of symmetry, what you say is, no, the structure is meso, so, the structure would be achiral. If you see a plane of symmetry in a structure, even if it looks like there's stereo centers, right? If you see a meso situation, plane of symmetry, the structure would be achiral. Okay, so we have one more video in the stereochemistry series, and it's all about Fisher projections. And again, it always comes back to assigning RNS. Fisher projections are just a different way of looking at structures instead of kind of drawing them in bond line. And then we're done. See you in the next video.